Hey guys, this is Mr. Miller. This is a quick help video for your second part of the project. So let's get started. So, um, in terms of pros and cons of each of the three types of bridges, uh, or three categories of bridges, we've already talked about beam bridges, but very quickly, beam bridges are great because they're very simple, easy to build, and you can place them just about anywhere. Uh, the cons are you need to have uh, supports relatively frequently, and so they can only cover short distances. They take a lot of material, um, generally considered pretty ugly, and they tend not to be very uh, tall. So, um, and it's just specifically, uh, it's susceptible to sagging if you have a force in the center of your bridge, the bridge deck is going to flex downwards uh, to provide a opposing vertical force uh, to make sure that the bridge is in equilibrium. So this force of tension right here that you can see in this image, uh, that's going to, you can see that it's at a slight angle, uh, which means a portion of it is a vertical force that's opposing the force of the weight and the force of, of gravity. Okay, but remember that the goal of bridge design is to ensure that we maintain mechanical equilibrium. That's when the sum of our forces uh, acting on our bridge is equal to zero. And that means that there is no acceleration. All right, so beam bridges, uh, very simple, easy to build, but prone to sagging. All right, suspension bridges. Well, with suspension bridges, they're great for covering long distances. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive to build. They tend to be considered very beautiful. So we have our Golden Gate Bridge example. Um, and the downside is that they are really, they're prone to twisting and the wind. Uh, so that was our example from Indiana Jones. If you're on a, say, rope suspension bridge and a gust of wind comes and suddenly you're swaying from left to right, these types of bridges tend to be uh, very susceptible to that, but they're excellent for, for long distances. Uh, whereas as we saw with the beam bridge, that wasn't the case. It was not as good for long distances. But again, the purpose of the suspension cables is to make sure that Everywhere along the bridge, so all along the bridge, the sum of the forces equals zero, no matter where you are. Uh, why? So that acceleration is equal to zero. We don't want our bridge to go from rest to starting to move, which would be an acceleration. Starting to move would be collapsing. All right, then we have our arch bridge. This does, again, the same thing as a suspension bridge. Uh, we are making sure that we have support forces no matter where we are on the bridge. So these cables uh, redistribute the weights, provides support uh, in the center of our bridge, and redistributes it to our support pillars. A very similar thing happens with an arch bridge, whereas through the use of an arch, we can provide support in the center of our bridge from sort of our foundation of support, uh, the very edges of our bridge where we have our pillars. Okay, and so the pros and cons of arch bridges, uh, one, they're very beautiful. Two, tend to be very sturdy and long-lasting. So this is a Roman aqueduct. It's been around for about 1,000 years. Uh, the cons are, you know, medium span, uh, some location constraints, and it really does take a, a lot of material to build these, okay? But again, our key point is that the sum of the forces are zero. Our bridge, uh, in order to stay upright and, and sturdy and not collapse, it needs to be in mechanical equilibrium or the sum of our forces at zero, which means there's no acceleration. All right, and then for your homework assignment in particular, let's just go through the questions. So select the goal of a good bridge design from the options listed below to, main, to ensure that the bridge maintains equilibrium. That sounds right. Uh, to ensure that the weights and loads of the bridge are supported along the entire length. Yep, C is all of the above and D is none of the above. So I'm thinking that it's C. It is very much the case that we are looking at making sure that we are in mechanical equilibrium and that no matter where we are on the bridge, uh, our bridge is supported. All right, based on the image above, how does an arch bridge provide support for the loads and weights along the entire length? It doesn't, and the arch will quickly bend in the center. That's not correct. Okay, and B, the arch redistributes the weight slash load to the beams and supports at the end of the bridge. All right, that's exactly correct. And so we can see here that the load from the top, this green arrow, uh, is being, it's the weight of the car on the bridge, 
it's being redistributed along the length of this arch down towards the down towards the the legs of the bridge uh, which press into the ground and so this weight gets redistributed to the supports on the side uh, and therefore we have uh, as a result of this arch we are able to support our bridge throughout the entire length all right newton's third law Okay, question four. The beam slash legs of the bridge press down along the entire length and load uh, the bridge on the ground. What is the reactant force in this scenario labeled F1 and F2 above? Okay, so right here, this, these two forces. Well, we have force of beam on the ground and force of beam on the ground. And so the reaction says that this must be the force of ground on the beam. So the, the force that the ground is pushing back up on the beam, which we know from Newton's third law. All right, so that looks like uh, the ground, uh, that's A. The reaction force is the force of the ground on the bridge, leg slash beams. All right, what is the magnitude of the reaction force in question four if the weight and the loads on the bridge uh, total 250? Okay, so there's actually two different ways of thinking about this, and I'll take either answer. Uh, a, if you consider the fact that there are actually two reaction forces, meaning uh, we have 250 and 250, and one total weight of 500 newtons. And so the sum of our forces vertically needs to be 500 newtons, uh, or, or rather or support one plus support two minus 500 newtons, and that needs to equal zero. Okay, and so we could determine this problem as saying, okay, well these two, if the weight's exactly in the center, then these should both be 250, and that would cancel out with our 500, so we get zero. So 250 would be the perfect, perfectly fine answer. Um, 500 would also be fine if you are dealing with this in more abstract terms, which means uh, the sum of the reaction force, the sum of the support force must be equal and opposite to uh, the bridge total. So either A or B would be fine. All right, what is the equation for the net vertical force acting on the bridge from the image above? All right, well, up is always the positive direction. Uh, well, for the most point. Uh, for the most part in physics, and we'll con continue with that convention. So we have F2 and F1 are both pointing upwards, and then our weight is pointing downwards, so that would correspond to A. F2 plus F1 minus our weight is equal to the mass of the bridge times the acceleration of the bridge. All right, based on the two images above, uh, which shows the free body diagrams of the bridge, how do suspension and truss bridges ensure that all portions of the bridge are supported? All right, uh, so suspension does not use triangles. Uh, and the length of the bridge for suspension tends to be very long. So the answer must be A to by, de by default. All right, which of the following would be an effective strategy to build a strong bridge? Include an arch to distribute weights. Include truss trusses slash triangles to distribute weights. Include suspension um, bridges... Okay, so any of the answers A, B, or C would be acceptable, but D, uh, we are not going to consider an effective strategy. Uh, there are some cons to having super rigid materials uh, such that they do, if they're too inflexible, then they could snap. Um, so D would not be correct, but A, B, and C would be fine. If you select any of those, I would take it. All right, that's it for our help video. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys uh, in class.